so you guys will be able to skip ahead a little bit here. Um, I just figured I would get this all set up for you, um, such what we did in class last week. Um, hopefully you guys can see this all right. Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to quickly throw this down. Hopefully it turns out decent. I do have a drafting table, so that's a little bit of an advantage. <coughs> oh, man. Sorry. All right. I'm going to do my little marks. Two hundred and forty feet right there. We're going to three hundred three, so we're going to another sixty-three feet. Hopefully, not blocking too much of this. I know you can't see things quite yet, but I'll move the bar so you can see it. Um, hopefully, the camera. I am using a different software than WebEx, obviously. Um, it should be require, uh, recording at a higher frame rate and a higher uh, um, resolution as WebEx. So hopefully you guys can see it's a little better. Um, okay, and then I to write that one down. So this one is 11 degrees. So here's a standard protractor. I think most of you guys used this um, in class the other day. Essentially lining it up here, right at the end point, and then marking out your 11 degrees. There are triangles like this um, that you can essentially you turn this little knob and you can set what angle you want this at. Um, it's kind of convenient. It, it, it only goes from 45 to 90, but what you can do, so say you wanted 11, you can throw, throw 11 or uh, We'll go 11 back from 90, and then now, if you line those up, it's like that would be zero and like 11 degrees here. So, kind of kind of a cool triangle. Um, you don't 
need it. Um, if you guys are interested in getting it, it's um, Elvin EH08, so kind of a unique tool. Um, all right, so I'm just going to use this just because that's what I know you guys have been using. Last one, 111 degrees. So this is definitely the trickiest one, because um, if you're even like a 30 second off there, you're, you're going to be a couple feet off at the end here. Um, let me mark. Sixty-four. So we're gonna have to go one hundred and twenty-four feet further. So what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna extend this line. So we got 240 here. We're gonna go another 124 feet here. And this one was a 90. So we're gonna set that right on that line there. I'm just gonna draw one longer than 20. So this one is obviously 90 here too, so you can push this up. You can go this route. I'm just gonna extend that a little more as well. Go to here. Mark out 20. Hopefully, oh, dang it, tore that. Go back up to here. Oh. Okay, 
basically our uh, guideline here. Um, that was about a foot off, which is not out of the realm. I didn't give you guys like the exact, I mean, AutoCAD, you know, you're going like 111.5 degrees here. So as long as you're pretty close, not a big deal. Um, if you're five feet off, that's a little much, but try to keep it within a foot or two. Um, So now what I typically would do on this is, uh, I guess there's a couple ways you could do this. You can do the property line setup, um, like I showed in class. Let me see if I can grab. use this one just because it's a little bit bigger so hopefully you guys can see it um, I'm just gonna go back over So there's the property line. Um, and I, I lay this out in pencil, obviously, first. You can go back in, take an eraser. Um, once you have the marker down, you can just go through and erase it. A little bit of a trick. Kind of clean it up. Um, for this, I don't really care, so I'm not going to go go through and, and do that. Um, so at this point, um, this is kind of where you guys will end up doing your sketches over this. Um, I kind of did a rough sketch already on the last video. I kind of, kind of did this roughly the same thing in class. Um, so something like that. Obviously, this isn't quite the same. Um, but all right. So this next part portion. I am going to throw another sheet over it, kind of start sketching out a little nicer, um, and just kind of, kind of keep building from there. Actually, 
I'm going to use, this might actually work better. Yep. So once you kind of have rough blocks out like that, um, I guess I didn't show um, the setbacks in here. I'll, I'll just have the setbacks on this one since I already have it taped. Um, grab. This guy. Alright, so. I'm going to mark 10 here, 20 here, this one will be a little weird, this will be 10 here too, this one, I guess I'm not too concerned about this one because it's there's, there's technically something in front of it, so I'm just going to do 10, 10, Thing. 20 here. We'll do 10 again here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to sketch that out just a little bit. I'm going to do 10 there. And that way, get a nice corner there. Okay, so now we have our setbacks. Uh, 
I'm going to start sketching out um, kind of more exact dimension things, and I'll show you guys how to get in drives and, and all that stuff. So, kind of following the previous example, I'm going to, I'm going to set a drive up here, and then have a through drive over here. Let me tighten this up a little bit. leave some parking room up here um, um, let's use 20 feet just to make it kind of a nice number so um, and then the setback here typically you can you can have there, there's a different parking setback than the building setback but We'll just use them as the same one for, for this project. So if we set here as a kind of a rough 20 feet, um, I'm going to do a 24 foot drive aisle. So I'm just going to write these down here. You, you don't need to do this, but I'm just going to kind of write it down. Hopefully you can see, maybe, you know, it might be too small. But anyways, 24 feet for your drive aisles. Um, and then 10, so here, 24 foot drive aisle, 10 foot by 20 foot park. Um, so I'm going to try to do a double, double bay here. This is kind of a rough line. Where this is going to go. Um, and then you'll have your radius here, you know, at, at each one. Um, and this, is, this is where I was talking about the. Um, circle template um, or um, if you really want to get fancy compass um, I guess I can show you guys both how to, how to use both of them um, so this one what you want to do this is typically what I would use being exact um, so usually you'd have like a six foot radius to six to twelve feet on your uh, um, parking curves. So, what I would typically do is go in here, get your six feet. So that's six feet here, scaled. Um, also, go in here, mark out six foot. curve right um, then you just erase that um, typically I go over pen or uh, you know go over marker or whatever at the end um, I'm gonna do a 12 foot on this one I'll show you another quick trick on how to do that this quicker than uh, measuring it out each time So another 
quick way to do this is basically grab that point there. Um, you can kind of do a little like that. Over here, over there. Sorry, do it the opposite way. Figure it out there, there, both edges, and then uh, you can get your your nice curve. So now you have a nice little curve. Um, so those are completed. So I'm just gonna go in with this so you can see it. So this is a calligraphy pen, so it's a little weird because it's probably going to change thicknesses a little bit if I don't turn it with with things like that. Um, so that's kind of your first curve, and then after that, you know, come in here, get that line down. So now you have a. 12 foot radius, 6 foot radius into a parking spot. Okay, so then after that, we're going to mark the parking out here. So, mark out 10 feet. Like so. Um, you typically don't want more than 10 parking spots in a row. You'll, you'll want to put a, a parking island in there. So I'm going to mark this out and then put a, I'm just going to put a little eye there just to remind myself. Um, and usually what I do with this, since this is on a straight edge here, you can't do this for all of them. Um, I'm just going to mark where 20 feet is. Just kind of do a rough line there, and that way I can just come in here, do a nice line at each one of these. Actually, I'm just going to do it in pen. And that way, I don't have to go back. Actually, I'm not going to stop using this one. I'm going to use uh, tech pens. These are the Stadler ones. Um, uh, use this one. So this will be a little more consistent. So this is that park island that I was talking about. So I'm going to draw this a little short. And then um, actually this one, I'll show you guys a trick on the part of the circle template. So this one, I just want to find what size circle kind of fits. Yeah, like right there. You can see that kind of fits that end. So I'm just gonna kind of finish that end off. Like a little little parking circle, or uh, yeah, parking island there. Right, let me uh, finish, finish that. And now, after that's all done, you can go in.
Okay. Um, all right, I'll do the same thing on this side real quick. Um, so if you do have that circle template, you can also figure out roughly what... Yeah, I can't go bigger than that, but this looks about to be that, that six foot. So this one, because it's a nice, clean parking lot, it'll end up being the same same spacing. So I'm not even going to mark those out. What I am going to do, though, is give, me a, give myself that 20-foot guideline. So now I can come in here. I'll, I can line myself up with that parking spot here. switch back to my pencil here for this one just to make sure I get a good Okay. So I can erase that. So now you have, there's 20 parking spots here. Um, okay, so now I'm going to lay here um, come through here yeah I think I'm gonna um, I'll, I'll keep the building here and I, I think I will go this way um, otherwise I probably would have had to circle back here so I am gonna keep the building over here um, for the building, I'm just going to keep it right on this property line here. Um, the building, you're going to want real, like a really nice thick line. Uh, this would be a good one for like a nice sharpie. Um, I'm going to hold it back. Yeah, let's say. Like eight feet here. Actually, crap. I meant to actually do this.
ABC. This is supposed to be So that is, I'm just going to write building here, just so you guys. Um, recognize that. So um, in continuing with, it, with this, you want to lay out the rest of your site. Um, obviously there's, there's a power poles. So make sure those are factored in. Have your drive aisle, um, all your parking laid out. Then go back in, um, figure out where your um, sidewalk is. So I'm gonna use a slightly different one here. So I'm just gonna show the sidewalk here. I like to show the sidewalk. Uh, squares every five feet. Use a little bit skinnier of a pencil for this one. So essentially two every parking spot. So you can see like the hatching kind of kind of helps quite a bit in terms of getting your full layout and then getting uh, kind of your point across, I guess. Um, so one thing when you are laying this out, um, you, you'll want to factor in where plants go. So you know, I could probably see a tree here, 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 here. Um, you know, there's probably some plantings up front here. I don't know exactly where, where the main entry to this building is yet. Um, you know, I could probably see some kind of detail element down here where maybe that's the main entry. Um, this is probably the back of house stuff. I mean, in reality, there might even be a, a trash, you know, a dumpster here or something like that where a trash truck can pull in and, and leave. Um, it is kind of a relatively small site. So don't focus too much on the parking aspect of it. Kind of, kind of focus on the building. Um, you know, where your 
your back of house stuff as where your you know main entry is um, you know where your uh, I guess I can I can start writing these down too just so you can kind of keep track um, so focus on you know like uh, main entry planters trees um, sidewalks I'm going to write people engagement here Basically, you want to you know make sure that this thing kind of draws in um, people to it. I guess if that makes sense, uh, you know. I mean, it, you look at like the the train station in East Lansing. You know, it's not a huge building. Um, it's pretty open. You know, there's not a whole lot of things there. I mean, you can you know the sheet the, the assignment sheet is posted, so you can kind of see. Um, exactly what the program is so usually these buildings especially public transit buildings are pretty unique um, you know they, they have a lot of architecture in them because otherwise it would be a pretty basic building just an open area so start to think about how this is this building is going to react with the site um, like I said there's not going to be a ton of parking you know most people who use train station things like this, um, they're they're riding a bus in, drop and getting dropped off. Um, they're getting dropped off by other people, Uber stuff like that. Um, most people don't come here, park their car, hop on a train, and go somewhere. Um, that's just not not typically how that works. So things like that. I mean, um, it's not required, but you know. A bus drop off probably would be a, a pretty good idea. Um, you know, my initial sketch there had a had a circular drop off kind of in here. Um, didn't really have you know, it kind of got rid of this parking. Had a um, yeah, drop uh, trash thing here. Big circle here. Yeah, I guess just have, have a little fun with it. That's, hopefully you guys had the three different sketches and you kind of could f feel how this is going. Um, the next one is going to be much more refined, basically what I did tonight where you're actually laying out the parking and, you know, sketching everything out. And you may end up having to redo this again as another sketch. Like, don't, don't get stuck on this and fixated on this. I mean, I, I jumped into pen early just so you guys could see it. Um, I would typically lay this all out in pencil, make sure it's essentially exactly what I want. Then I'd come back in and then go over a pen afterwards. Um, but even for this exercise, you don't actually need to do the pen because the next version, like the next week's lecture, um, you're essentially going to use this and do one last one, putting your entourage over all of this stuff. So you'll add in your trees and your your all that you know, you know a tree is going to cover up a lot of the you know some of the stuff. So you want to your final version is kind of going you know essentially from the top down, and your trees are probably going to be some of the taller items on your site. Um, so just kind of keep that that into the back of your head. Um, other than that, I think I'm going to call this video good. Um, I don't know if there's a, really any point in, in me filling out the rest of the parking. I kind of got the, the gist of it here. Um, let me know if you have any questions on this. I'm going to throw this on YouTube. Um, if you guys could do me a huge favor and just comment and make sure that this kind of works as a setup. Um, now a couple of different renditions and I think this one's probably the best so 
I guess just let me know if uh, you have trouble seeing it, anything like that. I can, I can try to adjust the camera down a little bit. Um, yeah, other than that, I guess uh, I will see you guys on Thursday. Thanks.